You know, I'm not gonna lie. When I first learned about the existence of this book, I was skeptical to say the least. I mean, from what I heard, this was bringing a dead character back to life and making him influential to stuff that happened while he was dead. These are things, you know, that have a good chance to screw up quite possibly the whole fucking series. Not to mention, all this for the dude whose entire plan was to die in the first place. So bringing him back seems like kind of a cop-out. Then, I read it. And just as how Kelsier knew nothing about the vastness of the Cosmere, the same could be said about my understanding of Brandon's genius. Basically, I'm a fucking dumbass. This is a masterpiece. So, let's talk about Mistborn, the final Kelsier. Already, we start off pretty strong. I'm glad Brandon didn't just do the whole, oh, Kelsier woke up in the afterlife. We actually get to see the fight where he died from his perspective. And when reading The Final Empire, this was one of my favorite scenes because no one had bested an Inquisitor before and it was actually looking like there might be some hope. But then he gets absolutely shit on and dies, which granted was his plan, but it just showed us how insanely intimidating the Lord Ruler was. The strongest Mistborn that we'd known until this point just got one-shotted. It was a great callback to that iconic scene and a really smooth way to transition us to Kelsier post getting shit on. So yeah, Kelsier dies, big sad boohoo, and then we get into the real story. Kelsier ends up in basically an intermediary realm called the Cognitive Realm, or what I'm pretty sure is Shadesmar from Stormlight. And this is the place between the living and the dead realm, the dead realm being called the beyond here. And while most people, like 99% people, just fuck off to the beyond because, well, they're being pulled towards it and, you know, you die, you want to just go, I... I'm going head out. But Kelsier says no thanks. Even in the face of death, this man continues to try to play by his rules. However, the key word here is try. This story is just a giant slap to Kelsier in everything he believes in. So let's do it. Let's talk about the story. I love the concept behind the story. Although it may seem like it's just Kelsier doing cool shit behind the scenes, it's surprisingly deeper than that. When reading The Final Empire, it was apparent that Kelsier was far from perfect. He was definitely not sane, which he embraced, so it felt like his character arc was at its end. Then his death and his crazy plan, it lined up perfectly with that. Alas, mere death does not stop a Chad like Kelsier. But it's not like he was having a good time either. Like I said, in this book, Kelsier pretty much just gets bullied. He realizes how little he actually matters in the grand scheme of things and how little he knows about the Cosmere as he continuously witnesses everything he ever knew just fall apart in front of him. Ruin just casually goes, hey, yeah, remember that plan you had? <laughs> yeah, no, I actually embedded that in your head, Lamau. Even Preservation, who's pretty much senile at this point, overwhelms Kelsier at many points in the story. Hoyt is in this book too, and I'll talk about our daddy Hoyt in a bit, but he just comes in, beats the living shit out of Kelsier, or, or dead shit. Hell, by the end, even Vin calls him out on his bullshit. It was really surreal to see the guy who was the mentor figure in the first book, the guy who always had a plan for everything. To see him get defeated time and time again was pretty eye-opening. This story has done something that seems fantastical. Every event Kelsier intervenes in doesn't overshadow anything Vin or our main characters were doing. Kelsier does not single-handedly clutch the entire fate of Skadriel, but he's also not completely irrelevant either. Without him, it would definitely have been a harder fight, and god damn, is that a perfect balance to strike. Alright, let's talk about the characters. I want to talk about the Lord Ruler first. He's definitely in my top 5 characters in Mistborn, and I honestly didn't expect him in this book. And granted, he doesn't get much screen time, but when he does, he really steals the show with just his presence. We're reminded again that what Rashek was doing, or Rashek, I don't, I don't fucking know. That what Rashek was doing was actually for the better of Skadriel, and Preservation even acknowledges this, which was a really cool thing. Although I think he cared more about the immortal part than anything. Like, the Lord Ruler just comes in, he meets Kalsir, talks some shit, kind of treats Preservation like a loser, and then just yeets himself into the beyond. It's just short, simple, sweet. Alright, let's talk about Preservation. Seeing a shard this broken was pretty sad. Actually witnessing Preservation's slow end was surreal. We'd already gotten a glimpse of it in Hero of Ages where Laris kind of just plops onto the ground, 
But here, since we kind of start to get to know him and really see him struggle, you start to feel for the guy. I'm so happy on how Brandon grounded the shards because at the end of the day, they were also originally human and they're just small parts of a powerful being. You can tell the guy really cares for the people of Skadriel and he's trying his best to keep them alive, but his time was just over. Overall, I loved seeing him in action and his interactions with Kelsier were great. All right, Hoyd. Oh, daddy Hoyd. I don't care what anyone says. This man's name alone bumps any Cosmere book from a 9 out of 10 to a 20. And we actually get to see him when one of the beads of Laracium goes missing, which is because Hoyd actually stole it. And that makes sense because we see him drinking a vial of some sort in one of Shallan's backstories. Now, my favorite part about Hoyd here was how similar he actually is to Kelsier in terms of personality. And why I like that is because Kelsier finds Hoyd insufferable just like how a lot of people felt that way with Kelsier. We have two of the best shit talkers in the Cosmere meeting each other, which was actually really funny. I don't remember the last time I've laughed out loud with a book like that, so kudos to Sanderson for the comedy to be honest. All in all, Hoyt just kinda does Hoyt things, he's up to his usual mischief, and it was great. Kelsier. I'm really happy with how Brandon handled Kelsier. In the first book, Kelsier was showed in a way where we believed he could pull off almost anything. Even when he died, it was all according to his plan. Yet, here we are now, where it's the complete opposite. Kelsier gets shit on so hard, he keeps facing obstacles that are outside the bounds of our imagination or comprehension. He's challenged more than he ever was, but even though he pulls through by the end, we know that nothing he did here was really part of a plan. He cannot make any plans because this world is so out of his reach. However, the man doesn't fucking give up. That core characteristic that is the foundation of Kelsier's appeal is what makes me love this character even more now. Yes, this was present in the first book, but the circumstances were completely different. He had plans, he knew what the possibilities were. Here in the cognitive realm, he might as well just be blind but that fighting spirit carries him all the way to the end. My favorite part, and this really sent chills down my spine when it happened, was when Preservation dies and Kelsier is going to take up his power. And all this while we've seen what our boy has been through, he's a shadow, not living, not dead, and unable to do anything for the people he loves. And finally it seems this is his chance, but he doesn't know what to do with it and the power doesn't seem compatible with him. When it seems that all hope is lost, preservation tells him one last thing. Survive. That moment was fucking amazing. What a callback to when Kelsier survived the pits of Hathson, the reason he was given the title of survivor and the moment that had made Kelsier into the crazy, insane leader he is today. Another thing I liked about that was when he took up preservation's power and he just wasn't compatible with it. I mean, Hey, sometimes I pick up video games that I think are pretty cool just to find out I'm dog shit at them. So yeah, that's that's the character segment. Uh, they're, they're pretty good. Finally, the world building. Now, I really love Brandon's concept of the afterlife. He handled it in a way where a large majority of it is still a mystery, but the answers that we get are really satisfying. It's not a simple construct either. He's put a lot of thought into this and it shows. The rules in this cognitive realm seem to apply differently to different groups or different types of people. It's different for the shards obviously, it's different for world hoppers, it's different for Hoyd, or he just knows more about it than the other hoppers, and obviously it's different for Kelsier. It's even different for fucking stakes, which stake fire Shallan reference? Speaking of Shallan, I like that this is kind of Shadesmar, but it also has its own vibe because of the different planet. People are seen as glowing objects because of their metallic souls, and there's a lot more mist here too. Pretty cool. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Mistborn Secret History. I thought it'd be unique to hear the thoughts of someone as monkey-brained as I am. I am no Cosmere Scholar and probably fucked up a lot of details in this, so feel free to bully me about it. That's it. The, the video is done. You can, you can go now.